Hi guys and welcome back to another Sonic Academy video tutorial. In this one we're going to have a look at Logic Pro 9 and it's going to be uh, quite a, a simplistic uh, beginner's course in this. I'm um, just getting to grips with the, the user interface and creating a, a fairly simple track. Um, the first thing then I want you to do is to just open up your copy of Logic Pro and you'll be presented with a screen here. And this is just asking you for um, what sort of track you're going to be creating and you've got sort of mastering sections down here in the producer section and if you're more um, recording vocals or guitars you've got sort of preset templates already set up we're just going to go ahead click on the explore section and we're going to click on an empty project now that you're in here you'll be presented again with another screen before you can do anything and this is just asking you to create a couple tracks or for how many tracks you intend to use in your project. Um, you've got two different types here. You've got an audio track and you've got a software instrument. And you've got an external MIDI as well, but we're not, we'll not be using that. We're just gonna be using the audio and the software instrument. And the, the main differences between the two, um, audio is basically um, sound. So it's uh, my voice, for example, recorded in and sampled at a particular uh, rate and saved on the computer and that's that's going to be stored there to, to be used in your track your software instrument is midi based so uh, it's basically just a set of instructions telling your computer to actually play a sound so you would need um, a vst instrument to actually play those instructions out loud so again midi um, is a set of instructions audio is the actual hard uh, data recorded in so we're going to be using a mixture of the two, um, but for now we're just going to go ahead, leave it on software instrument, and number one is fine because I'm going to open up the the other project here just to have a look through. So I'm going to create that, and you'll see here that it is open uh, a few things now. So this is your main interface in the middle here, and this is where you're going to arrange your track out. This whole section here is where you're going to be putting in all of your audio bits and all of your MIDI bits to create your song. I'm just going to start at the top left of our of our um, user interface then and just run through the the necessities that you, we need to know about. So we've got a big eye at the top left here and this is to show and hide this big window down the left which is what they call it the inspector and it basically just shows details of any track that you've got selected from the main um, arrangement window here in the middle. So I've got this instrument track here selected, so it's showing me details on that instrument track. And I can expand and collapse various different parts of that as well. It's also showing me the channel strip of that, and it also shows me the stereo white channel strip too. We'll cover that um, just at the end of this video. So then moving across, we've got our preferences, um, which is just your, your basic preferences where you can go in and tweak your, your audio um, or set up and set up your video settings or whatever you need to do. Got a settings window then as well for setting up your metronome. Um, you've got again video settings. It's all um, pretty advanced stuff that you, we don't really need to go into it. We've got an auto zoom here as well. I'm just going to open up the final project here. Let's close what we've got. opened up on the wrong window okay so I confused you a wee bit I'll just get rid of this okay so this is what we've got again these are just a few extra tracks in here and we were explaining the auto zoom function so just click on the auto zoom and then click on the a different audio track or a different instrument track it actually zooms that track out so that we can find it easier to edit and when it's when a, a track isn't being clicked on it obviously minimizes itself down so it's quite handy and you can leave that on if you want we then got uh, an automation button which we'll be again using later on it uh, shows your automation lanes below all of your tracks and um, that's for automating your um, sort of volume increases or decreases or you can automate pretty much anything that you can move on the screen can be automated by uh, a line that you can draw in yourself. 
very useful. Then you've got this flex control here, um, which is similar to Ableton Live's warping, um, where it takes an audio sample and it uh, uses an algorithm on it to flex it to fit into a particular time. So turning that on will show the flex control on a particular track and you can change the different flex methods. So there's, there's different algorithms that can be used on, um, for example, uh, beats or um, vocal parts. So we can turn that off again. We'll be covering flex later on. Um, we've got our set locators, um, which basically, if I've got a, a particular part selected, I can click on set locators and I'll set our locators at the top here at the beginning and end of that section that I've just clicked on. Uh, moving to the right of that, then we've got repeat selection. So wherever you've got your locator set, using repeat will actually uh, duplicate that across. So you see that just duplicates the exact same thing across there. And um, we've got cut, which is just a simple cut for um, a particular section. Um, we've got, that's a cut. We've got an insert, so whenever you've copied a section, if you put your playhead somewhere and paste, it's basically just a, a fancy paste. Um, then we've got some split uh, controls, which allow you to split by either where the locators are set or by the playhead, so you can set the playhead and split down the playhead. Again, something that we don't particularly need at the minute. And then we've got merge for just merging two parts together, so it's like a, a glue tool. And then moving across again, we've got a bounce section, which is just a, an export. And we've got a color section for coloring in our different parts. So if I wanted to change this to red, I can do that. And then we've got a notes section which basically allows you to just draw on some notes, overall notes for the project or overall notes for that particular track. So if there's anything you need to remember about that track, you can just jot that down. Um, by the way, just collapsing that right window is just uh, as easy as clicking on whatever it is is open for a second time. We've then got lists, um, which we don't really need. It's, it's more sort of um, just showing you any events that have, have occurred or will occur in the uh, the project that you're using. So here, this just notes um, any events that are occurring. We've got um, any markers that we've got set throughout the project, any tempo changes and what position that happens, any signature changes, and again, at what position that happens. Um, the one thing we will be using is this media section, which is the first thing it should open up on your window anyway. We've got the bin. Um, which basically is any audio you bring into your project will be saved into this bin. So you can review that. Um, we've also got a loop section, which which should store all of your Ableton, or sorry, not Ableton, your uh, Logic Pro loops. So um, all of the, uh, the content CDs and the jam packs and stuff will all be in here. So it's all pretty much organized nicely out as well. So for example, say you were looking for a jazzy synth, It does its best to find you a, a jazzy synth. Um, you've got a library control here as well. Again, just lets you flick through Ableton's. Um, God, I keep doing that. It lets you flick through uh, Logic's uh, library. Um, this one here in particular is just uh, effects. So um, EQ settings and things for particular tracks. We then go over to the browser. And this lets you just go through your entire computer and find um, whatever it is you're looking for. So if you've maybe downloaded samples, um, you can browse to the samples folder and you can uh, flick through your samples and drag them into your project as you wish. Okay, so I think I'm going to leave it there just for this video because there's quite a lot to take in. And in the next one, I'm going to go through just the controls on this main window here and uh, a couple other bits and bobs at the bottom of your screen.